Hi, I'm Caroline from the Writing Development Centre and I'm here to talk you through how to identify possible angles in your essay questions. This will help you tackle those argument-driven essays that are typical of, but not exclusive to, the arts, humanities and social sciences. If you've ever looked at an essay question and thought, how am I going to cover all that within the word limit, then finding a specific angle will help you narrow the question down. Additionally, while there might be wrong answers, there's rarely just one single possible right answer. And indeed, there are angles and angles. Some are more obvious than others and lead to fairly safe, fairly standard answers. Some demonstrate more creativity, ambition and flair. And it's pursuing those angles that can help push you into the higher marks. Here, I will walk you through two strategies you can apply to identify possible angles and evaluate them to help distinguish the most promising from the basic and from the overly ambitious. Before we get started, let's look more closely at why it's so important to identify possible angles when you're set an argumentative essay. There's often multiple possible answers and multiple possible ways of reaching these answers. It's natural to be a bit resistant to the idea that you need to choose one angle, one stance. What if we choose the wrong path? And this means missing things out, right? What if the marker thinks we don't know about all those other angles? Let's unpick these assumptions a little bit. Firstly, markers are not asking you to tell them everything you know about a topic. It's OK not to explore all the possible directions you could go in, and it's OK not to cover everything you possibly could. You're being asked to answer a specific question to solve a particular problem in your own way. These essays aren't designed to test your knowledge, but what you can do with it. Furthermore, depth is better than breadth. It's better to choose one approach and give yourself the space to explain, evidence and analyse each point fully. Finding a specific angle from which to approach the question helps you set limits so you can avoid covering too much and producing descriptive, information-heavy work that demonstrates little critical thinking or argument building. Markers are just as interested in how you reach your answer, the approach you take, as they are in the answer you arrive at. So as promised, I'm now going to show you a couple of strategies that can help you think critically and creatively about argumentative essay questions so that you can begin identifying possible angles. So this is the first strategy I'm going to show you. We've got a question here. Critical thinking is a skill which can be taught to all and can be applied to any context or subject. Discuss this statement. So what we've got here is a classic quote discuss essay, but you can apply this technique to any type of question. And I'll show you another type in just a little bit so that you'll be able to see that. But what we need to do is to kick off that critical thinking process by identifying all the different angles we could take here. And we're going to do this by emphasising each word or phrase in turn. OK, so let's start off by underlining critical thinking. A potential angle here is, hang on, for critical thinking to be a skill that can be taught to all and applied to any context or subject, it first needs to be a clearly defined thing. Is it? Is critical thinking a coherent and generally accepted concept? What does it even mean? OK, let's underline skill next. This opens up yet another possible angle. You could go with something like, is it a skill? If it isn't a skill, what is it? An innate ability, a literacy, a mindset, a competence, a talent? You're probably getting the idea now, but let's keep going and underline taught to see what possibilities this raises. Well, can it be taught? How? Or is it something that some people can just do naturally and others can't and you can't learn it? Let's underline all now. What does that give us? Well, can it really be taught to everyone? Are there some people who can't learn it? 
perhaps it's only adults or really intelligent people. Let's underline applied next and interrogate that idea. Can you always apply it? Is apply the right word, like it's a tool? Or is it more a mindset, a way of looking at things that you can't help? Okay, let's go with any next. Again, we can ask ourselves, really, any subject or context? Is it really so universal and transferable? Or does it depend? And if so, what does it depend on? And we can underline context. And lastly, we can underline subject. So we can underline context and subject in turn to see what possible angles and approaches that uncovers. And in doing so, we can start to see angles like, no, not any context, it depends, or no, not any subject, some aspects of critical thinking aren't universally applicable. Or perhaps it is relevant in all university subjects, but not outside university in other contexts. So, what was all that about? <laughs> well, that question, like any argumentative essay question, contains an assumption. Well, actually, that question contains several. Perhaps yours does too. Here are the assumptions in this one. Firstly, that critical thinking is a thing, a clearly defined thing. Secondly, that it can be taught. Thirdly, that it can be taught to all. Fourthly, that it can be applied. And lastly, number five, that it can be applied to any context or subject. So what this strategy of underlining various words and phrases and shifting the emphasis actually does is highlight each of those assumptions so you can isolate them and begin to question them. It's in questioning these assumptions that we start to see what arguments might take shape and be promising to pursue. And it is fine to take just one of those angles because you are still answering the question. So as I said earlier, we've been looking at a quote to discuss question, but you can apply this strategy to any type of question. I think that's worth noting because the word discuss alerts you to the fact that there is something to be discussed that you're not expected to take these statements as a given. You're being invited to interrogate them and state whether you agree, disagree, or are somewhere in between. So I just wanted to show you another version of the question so that you can see that you can still apply the same strategy even when you're not being given as clear a prompt to challenge assumptions and formulate an argument. Okay, so here we've got explain how critical thinking can be taught to all and applied to any subject or context. The assumptions are being asserted even more strongly here. All these things are true, explain how they are true. And, you know, some or all of these assumptions may be true, but we still need to interrogate them in order to make sure and present a convincing argument. It's possible to critique the question itself, so we can still apply the old underlining strategy. If we underline explain how, a possible response to that is, well, actually, I can't explain any or some of these things because it simply isn't the case. And if you keep clicking through the next few slides, you can see that we can keep on going in exactly the same way that we did before, questioning each assumption in turn and all of the same angles we identified earlier remain viable.
So this strategy can really help you do a full 360 degree walk around your question, helping you to think creatively so that you can identify all of the possible angles of approach. Identifying an angle early on at the question analysis stage can really streamline the pre-writing process for you, particularly the reading process, because instead of reading in a very broad, general way, you can read in a more focused way, centred around the particular angle you'll be pursuing, using the questions that you raise as you analyse your assignment question to spot the established ideas and controversial debates in the literature. The next step, once you've identified all of the possible angles, is to evaluate which one has the most promise and is most worth pursuing. Quite rightly, I can hear you ask, how am I supposed to know that? Well, this is where you can use your reading to test how promising your potential angle might be. Challenging the inherent assumptions underpinning a question prevents us from producing an answer that's a bit too safe and standard. However, we've got to be careful that we aren't being overly ambitious, setting common sense aside and pushing too far when we challenge these assumptions. There's no point playing devil's advocate for the sake of it if there's no real case to make. So some questions you can use your reader to answer are... Is this a line of inquiry that's been pursued before? If it hasn't, at undergraduate level, I'd probably be leaving it alone. You need to at least be walking in existing footsteps to some extent, so you have a decent evidence base to draw from and support your own claims. Otherwise, you've got enough research work there for a whole dissertation. If this angle has been pursued before, is it still a fruitful line of inquiry or is it more of a case of, uh, no, that was an angle at one time, but it's been pursued quite a bit in the past and we're really done with that now? Everyone kind of agrees critical thinking isn't a simplistic skill. This is just an example. And we've moved past it. You need to be engaging in an ongoing debate rather than something that's done and sorted. So we've looked at finding an angle, a way into a question, a particular way of approaching it and narrowing it down. Now let's focus on developing a stance, the position that you're going to take. So I'm going to give you that same question again, and you've had lots of clues already. So take a few minutes to jot down all the stances you could take from completely agree with the statement to agree with some of the statement and if so, which bits, to I completely disagree with this statement. Imagine what your conclusion to this essay might be and jot that down, not as questions this time, but as a statement. So how many did you get? Let's see what we've got here. OK, so this quote discuss question is essentially a to what extent question in disguise. Here's a statement, to what extent do you agree with it? So whenever we're faced with a question like that, three standard possibilities present themselves straight away. I entirely agree, I completely disagree, and hmm, I'm somewhere in the middle. And that's what we've got on this slide here. To start with, we have those two extremes, and we really need to question whether either of those extremes are likely and entirely uncontroversial. Concepts like this are rarely black and white. It's more likely that the answer does lie somewhere in the middle. So the third position here is more nuanced and therefore a bit more considered and convincing. Here, we've got two examples of the kind of thing we talked about earlier, that challenging of particular assumptions within the question. Now, one of the questions we're asked most at the WDC is, what does a first class essay look like? Or how can I get a high mark in my essays, a first or a high 2-1? It's this kind of thing that typically characterizes a first class or high 2-1 answer, something that moves beyond those standard three positions of yes, no, in the middle and doesn't just use those stock primary colours. Something that has that kind of flair 
also has the potential for higher marks, but it also has the potential to collapse under the weight of its ambition. You're taking a risk in pursuing this kind of line, so you do need to tread carefully. And as I mentioned earlier, you're going to be using your reading to, in a sense, read the room and gauge whether or not your ideas have traction and your position can be evidenced and supported. You need to make sure you're not just playing devil's advocate and putting forward an unlikely or unsupportable stance just for the sake of it. You can't try and be too clever. This takes confidence in your own critical abilities and your ability to critique and interrogate the work of others, certainly, but also in your ability to turn that camera lens around and point it at yourself. So you need to be self-critical here too and be able to objectively critique your own claims. Why do I think this? What evidence am I using? Are there other ways that evidence could be interpreted though? Am I being a bit blinkered? Have I missed something? What about X? That's the kind of critical thinking we need in order to pull off this slightly more risky approach. So what we're seeing is that you can play it too safe but you can also take too many risks and end up being too out there. Let's look at where that line might fall, that line between ambitious flair and what? That doesn't answer the question, they've completely gone off on one. If we take this first position here that's taking the question in a very different and unexpected direction, focusing on one particular aspect of the question, whether or not critical thinking is a skill, and unpicking that assumption. It's a bit tenuous, and it probably does just nudge that line I mentioned, but you could pull it off if you're careful, because it is picking up on something that's inherent in the question. This next one, though. We see it pay very brief lip service to the question and then move immediately beyond it, looking at other skills that are more important than critical thinking. That's not the question. That's not what you've been asked. So if you're thinking to yourself, yes, I definitely want to demonstrate that flair, that ambition, make sure that you're not pushing things so far that ultimately you're answering a completely different question to the one you've been set. You might find it helpful to check in with your tutor before you commit yourself to taking that position just to make sure that you're still within the parameters of the question.